The following podcast is recorded and produced by the Podcast Precinct in affiliation with the network at BICBP-radio.com. The Podcast Precinct. Consistency. Creativity. Culture. The Nostalgia Funhouse proudly dedicates all episodes in the loving memory of Connie Chirac. So, Johnny, I've, I've been hearing really great things about this Nostalgia Funhouse. It just brings back so many great memories. Andrew, uh, another reason I'm getting in line with you here is that you really vouch for this show. So, I'm just going to believe you that this is the show that you know I've been wanting, which is just talking about all the fun stuff from our uh, yesteryear and years before. Uh, and I really hate anything meta, so I'm glad that what we're doing right now is not that. Oh, no, definitely. What is meta? Is, isn't that Ron Artessa's new name? <laughs> well, add world and peace to it, sure. <laughs> yeah, but this is, this is great. They Like, last year they were, like, tearing play sets and Halloween costumes. And well, they, that sounds cool. They get, like, these weird court recordings from, like, pop culture courts. Does anybody care about court cases? Uh, these ones are kind of cool. They put hmm. Scott Kelvin on trial for Santa Claus there. But, oh wow! Yeah. Okay, you're. That sounds interesting. Yeah, man. You know what's the best part about this is though? Is I hear they always got a really great sponsor. You can check it out right there. So the boy fell asleep in the Toys R Us store. And he woke up with toys from the ceiling to the floor. We've got Kenner's Silverhawks from the ceiling to the floor at Toys R Us. Heroes and villains, only $5.99 each. Super Attack Bird Tallyhawk, only $18.99. Silverhawks Mirage, $24.99 at Toys R Us. Love growing up with my Toys R Us kid. Toys R Us, you'll never outgrow us. Ho, ho, ho! Welcome to the Nostalgia Holiday House! I'm Santa, and that's Johnny and Andrew. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year! Oh, thanks, Santa. Thank you. Wow. Celebrities are all the time here. Wow. That's my Owen Wilson. <laughs> wow. 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 That's pretty good, right? Wow. Yeah. One of the funniest things that I never realized about an actor until my buddy Will in a panel discussion brought it up. And it's so true about Owen Wilson, who we all like. I but don't. like when he when he's in a heated conversation with somebody, it's like a loud whisper he does. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm not a fan. He wow. is my least favorite out of the Wilson brothers. Well, there's like two to choose from, right? Well, three. Oh, the I'm always the, the one that finds the weird noses, obscure so. brother. Like I'm a big Cooper Manning fan that nobody knows about in the Manning brothers. Unless I get it. Yeah. Ask me which Baldwin's my favorite. <laughs> I can't even tell them apart anymore. Steven. I don't know anything about them. I don't. There's what? Steven. <laughs> Steven. Daniel. Alex, the big one. Daniel. There's a lot of Baldwin's. Yeah. I'm a Luke oh. Wilson guy. I'm a Luke Wilson guy. I get it. I get it. I'm a volleyball Wilson guy myself. A great actor, deserved the Oscar. I got asked about that movie at work because I said Tom Hanks is my favorite actor. They're like, so how did you like the movie uh, where you stranded on the island? So it's pretty good till you realize that you spent two hours watching, realizing what you watched a guy talk to a volleyball. Then you're kind of like, I need to reevaluate my life in some type of capacity. Oh, I think the movie's great, personally. But uh, oh, I I think it's fine, but I don't know. There's saw it in the theater, like a boss. I like, and it's a and it's a really good FedEx commercial. It is, and the movie, the phone booth. Yes, I remember that one. Yep. Uh, I, I can't do it. Like, can we get some variety? Can we go? Play oh, where's where they're like stuck in one place for a long time? Yeah, I'm not. Yeah. Not a huge fan of those. Yeah, but think of the money you save on the budget. True, true, true. I mean, I guarantee you it's what the thought was going into the phone booth movie. Like, how can we, I know, let's just take place in like a a, a five by five area <laughs> and never leave. Plus, too, I'm not a big Keith or Sutherland guy. He's all right. I'm with you there. I don't hate him, but he's he's all right. 24 was, the first season of 24 was good. 
But after that, I just didn't care very much anymore. Like it's already been watch a, it it's already been a full day. I'm I'm fine with it now. <laughs> I didn't watch it because of Keith or Sutherland. <laughs> Doesn't he have a brother? I think he does. Uh, I don't know if he has a brother. He's related to somebody father. famous, right? Yeah, his father, Donald. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, see, I knew what I was talking about. <laughs> yeah, see, you got it. Yeah, see, that's yeah. the ticket. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's the ticket. Wow. Speaking of uh, John Lovitz, who played <laughs> Hanukkah Harry, it's also the holiday season for Christmas, as uh, Santa alluded in the beginning. You like my uh transition there of- it was beautiful it was incredible and i'm full of yuletide cheer <laughs> so johnny and i went through some lists and through what little bit of memory we have left in our head that we can actually remember things and which we-, we have to stress is so little i my memory andrew can attest to this oh. literally he'll tell me Three times a week what our next episode is, because I have to constantly ask, because I can't remember. <laughs> I have a notebook written everything down, and I'm like, uh-oh, Johnny doesn't remember that. Well, I also wouldn't remember either if I didn't write it. Down. I am so grateful for that notebook. <laughs> it it's single-handedly is the reason this show could keep going on, because <laughs> me and you, if left to our own uh, devices and, and self, would oh. not remember, and we would be repeating episodes left and right as well. Yes, (laughs) you would get uh, (laughs) heroes tournaments every other every every episode. (laughs) Maybe a villain, (laughs) hero villain. That's all. Yeah, we'll throw in one every once in a while just to make it wacky. But yeah, you're right. This is the Christmas season, and they don't do it near as much now. They some shows still do it, but it seems less and less a thing. Where every December you can expect your favorite show or sitcom to have like a Christmas or holiday themed episode. Yes. I know where they did the, the Halloween was the other big one uh, Thanksgiving every once in a while, but I think yeah. Christmas and Halloween were the two big ones, but we went through, we picked five each. We sat down, we watched them and we graded them by letter by letter. Right. We didn't, I don't know if we, Oh, but, Oh, I have a big reveal here. You did number? <laughs> no, even worse, my friend. What? You didn't. Uh, I watched just mine. I didn't know I had to watch yours. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're going to watch both. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I sent you my list. Oh, I thought you... I, <laughs> my brain thought you were sending it to me because... You're like, hey, here's my five. I need your five so that we both have all 10 of them and we can just discuss them. <laughs> I don't know why I never thought I'd need to watch your five as well. I was wondering because you were like, oh, you watched mine? <laughs> I'm like, that's what I was yeah. saying. Yeah, <laughs> we're that's talking about here. Shot. I was like, wait, <laughs> was I not supposed to? Oh, man. That is why I was so shocked. Okay. Oh god, that was funny. <laughs> oh man, I had some really good like hard hitting episodes in mind. I bet you did. I have no doubt. <laughs> That's why I was so excited to hear about your because I didn't know oh. you were going to go out of your way. I was very excited to hear about your X Files take. Yeah, because <laughs> you'd never seen the show X-Files before. State X Files episode ever. So I'll tell you what. For mine, since Johnny didn't watch them. Oh, I got a, I got a great I, idea. I read the synopsis. I tell you about it, and then you choose whether you want to watch it or not. I got a, I got an idea. All right, what what if before you read the synopsis, you tell me the show, and I'll try to guess what the synopsis is, and just tell me the title of the show of the episode. Okay, and, and I'll try to guess and see how close I get. Okay, and then we'll then I'll read it to you, and then you will see if you can you watch it or not. Yeah. So I'll just go first. So the first episode I have on my list is The Wonder Years. It is uh, season season two, episode three. It's just entitled Christmas. Oh, that doesn't give me much to work with there. You said uh, season two, so you said, so it's early in. 
than yep. the show. Uh, all right. I, I guarantee you there's narration at the beginning. <laughs> Call me out on that if you if you must. No, there's narration. There's <laughs> yes, narration. nailed it. Nailed it. And Ben Savage's brother's in it, guaranteed. Talking about brothers. I was a bigger fan of Ben Savage. <laughs> no. I'm a Fred Savage guy. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I'm a Boy Meets World kid, so that's probably my reasoning. But uh, I don't know. That's just too generic of a title. I guarantee you Christmas is involved, but there's some sort of shenanigans that happens, but they overcome it as a family and and, and stick together. Uh, In a way, but I think that's why I like Wonder Years, because it's not that type of sitcom. As you know, I'm a big like Jack Arnold, the father of Wonder Years fan. Yes, yeah, <laughs> he, he's probably my favorite character on there. That and the best friend, that best friend kid. Oh, Paul Pfeiffer. Yeah, yeah. I fucking hate Wayne. Sorry for swearing, but oh, oh, just beep it out. That dude plays in. He would be like the best heel wrestler in the world. And that the blonde haired kid. Yeah, Wayne, his older brother. Wasn't he in? Uh... Uh, he was a monster squad. Using yeah, he's the one who said uh, that word that we talked about. Yeah, yes, the, uh, <laughs> yes. the slurs. He's yep. also in Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Oh, yeah, he yep. plays the bratty actor. But here we go. Are you ready? Yep. Uh, Kevin and Wayne tried to talk their father into buying a color television for Christmas, but it's not easy as the TV costs. Four hundred and seventy dollars. Meanwhile, Kevin tries to find a present for Winnie Cooper after he unexpectedly receives one from her, because I believe they just broke up. Uh, after debating on which perfume to buy her, Kevin settles for a small water globe containing a miniature figure skater. But when Kevin takes it over to Winnie, he is surprised to find that Winnie is not there to receive the present. Turns out Winnie. Uh, that Winnie, the oh, I'm sorry, that the Coopers unexpectedly left town for Christmas because they could not bear spending their first Christmas without Brian. Brian was Winnie Cooper's brother from, I believe, the first season that was killed in Vietnam. Uh, Kevin yeah. leaves the present with her in with the house sitter and then joins the family for a night of caroling. Although they get rained on by an out-of-season thunderstorm by the end of the episode, it is revealed that Jack did buy the color TV two years ago. Now, in this episode, I might add, Jack gives a very rousing speech because they are trying very, very hard to get him to buy this color TV. Yeah. And, you know, Kevin's <laughs> doing everything right and just talking like, hey, dad, can I help you? You know, trying to butter him up. And then Wayne being Wayne is like, dad, are you going to buy the TV or not? <laughs> yeah. But then Jack gives a very awesome kind of speech in a way, very fatherly speech where he's like, I like color TV. I probably like color TV more than all of you. You know, that like, hey, but there's shit that's got to get paid. It's $470, and this is like 1960-something. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Let's say that. But... That's like a million dollars in today's terms. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we got to we gotta worry about other things and stuff like that. So it's very. Now, Andrew. Yeah. Famously, when I was a kid, uh, my parents, when I finally got my Nintendo, they got it for me for Christmas. Also got me a little, I mean, it was really small, TV, and it was in black and white. It was a black and white TV. Mm-hmm. So my first TV was a black and white television. So I, I and this is in the 80s. So. Oh, I understand. <laughs> we had the black and white TV on top of the color TV, and that's what we had our, our Atari 2600 hooked up to, was the black and white TV. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. So I under I understand. So I under. But is it, the thing about, I remember, I picked this one too because I remember watching this as a kid and be like, wait, all TVs weren't weren't color? Like, this is something that just arrived and by, by the time I'm watching this, like 30 years ago. So it was very interesting. But I did like Jack 
there's a scene where they're walking through the department store and I really miss a good department store. Yeah. That is, that is something I miss. Uh, and they see the color TVs and Jack's like, oh, and Wayne's like, look at all the color TVs too bad. We can't get one. And you can see Jack. He just wants to get them the color TV. He wants that. He wants the color TV, but he knows it's not going on right now. Yeah. And the rainstorm is kind of funny because when it does start raining, like everybody scatters and Jack just like stands there. Like, have you ever gone caroling? No, I'm a, I'm a Jack Arnold. I'm just, you know, I, I don't even know if it even happens anymore. Uh, but you know, I famously, uh, well to me famously, I grew up in a Mennonite church and we would go caroling. Uh, we'd go around the neighborhood caroling. We'd get in a van and drive to a neighborhood. And it would almost always be like elder people from the church that we knew mm-hmm. that we would go sing carols for. It wasn't like we were showing up on people's doorsteps that we had no idea who they were. We always had some idea of the person, and we knew that they would be receptive toward it. We weren't just showing up unannounced, oh, <laughs> forcing people to hear our terrible harmonies. Because <laughs> I'll also tell you this about Mennonites. We famously have no rhythm, so... I can almost see that. I don't want to sound horrible. There's no almost scene. I'm just telling you. I'm. I grew up in and I, I and we. The fact that we had a bass player who could keep rhythm was a miracle. That's, <laughs> that's how I know God's real because we had a bass player who, who had rhythm <laughs> in a midnight church. I was gonna make a South Park joke, but I didn't know if it would go. Oh, we'll get to there. <laughs> uh. But I gave this episode an A plus. I thought it was it, it brought back all the same good memories. I really yeah, and it's also it. pretty deep too. I mean, the whole thing with winning her family, yeah, you know, uh, that's a deep issue there that they're having here as a part of this Christmas story. And kudos for that. Uh, I I do remember this episode. I'm not as big a I, I do like one of yours, but I'm not as big on it as you are. But uh, I'm with you. The dad, I always liked the dad. He he was great. Yeah. See, when I was younger, when I first started watching as a kid, I was like, why is that dad always so grumpy? Yeah. Then as I got older and I became. You understood it. Yeah. I understand. And I think he's one of the best TV dads ever to the point where the Goldbergs, I must hit something. The Goldbergs did a whole episode kind of like dedicated towards him. Yeah. Oh, Goldberg's I absolutely adore. And it definitely takes some uh some uh, love from Wonder Years for sure. Uh but yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna get even though I didn't watch it for this, <laughs> I'm gonna give it a very solid A. I think it's a really good Christmas episode from what I remember and from what you've been saying. Yeah, it was it was great. It hits all the good points. There's a point where it's Christmas Eve. That's why they go caroling to because it's Christmas Eve and everybody wants to go do their own thing and it, Jack's just he's pissed off because you can tell he's pissed off, not because he's just pissed off at the world, because he feels like I could I could see him sitting there and he just feels like he's letting down his family because he's not getting him the TV. Yeah, like I let down you by not watching these episodes like I should have. (laughs) And he's like (laughs) just trying to keep them together. He's like yelling at the daughter. Where are you going? She's like the most insignificant character. I wonder yours. I don't know why she exists, but that's that's they could do like a a Cunningham and have her go upstairs and never come back. (laughs) Yeah, there's sometimes she does end up going out with David Schwimmer at one point. Uh because I went back through it, I rewatched all the Wonder Years a couple of years ago. But you could just see him. He just wants the family together. He feels upset, and nobody, and everybody wants to leave and go do something. Yeah. But I gave it an A plus because it still brought back that wonderful holiday spirit towards me. Yeah. All right. Uh, my first episode I want to bring up. I had to choose between because this sh- show had a lot of really rememberable ones for me, but I went with family matters season four, episode 12. It's beginning to look a lot like her go. And I watched this episode, Johnny. I know because you are a responsible adult. Unlike your co-host <laughs> who did not put together that he should have done his job. 
<laughs> are you the are are you the new poster child for the uh, meme? You had one job. <laughs> I think so. I really, I'm not even kidding. I feel very guilty about this. <laughs> And I'm gonna I'm gonna break the fourth wall again, Andrew, and I'm gonna be completely honest with you. I didn't go back and watch these of mine either. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> I just I have very strong memories of them. So uh but I'm incredibly curious what you thought of these. Okay. Uh the basically this episode is uh Urkel messes up and I think he and he destroys by because he's really clumsy, he destroys uh, Laura's presence, I think, is what it is. Like she had, she gotten presents for people, yeah. and he had broke them or something like that. Well, it starts off with Wenslow's decorating the tree. Yeah, Steve comes in with a new invention, and here I am, like I actually, <laughs> I just watched it not too long ago. But Steve comes in with the, uh, comes in with his new invention to flock the trees in other words spray snow onto the tree yeah, yes and of course it goes haywire yeah. yes and it goes all over the place and then he sees laura outside of like sweet department store yep and she just did some uh charity work and she picked up uh crystal vase that she had for that's what it was yeah mother and she said that one of the greatest words that we don't have anymore layaway Yes, I definitely remember Layaway. I yeah. watched this one thing on YouTube called Gen X Talks, and he was like, what is the one thing you miss about Christmas? And he asked his father, and he was like, Layaway. <laughs> I was like, thank you. Okay, I'm not the only yeah. one. Oh, yeah. Kmart famously oh. had a great Layaway system. Yes. It really was... helped my family out when we were when we, a long time ago. Yeah. yeah. My mom was the, the queen of Layaway at Hills, as you yeah. <laughs> learned about Hills. Oh, you want... You want me? So the gist of it is the gist of it is uh Laura gets mad, yells at Urkel, yeah. uh, and he feels bad and he kind of slinks off. And she basically makes a wish that she's like, I wish he could see where I'm coming from. And it ends up being there's an angel there, and he makes it so it's a they switch places type of thing. He takes her Urkel takes her place and she takes Urkel's place. So in a way, they both feel what each other feels in each other's shoes is yeah. the gist of the episode. And it was so her guardian angel can get wings and Laura Urkel screws up. Pretty much it's uh, my notes are I love a good Urkel invention because they always went. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, and the remote control that the angel uses looks like an iPhone. And then it's just got a great message. You know, put yourself in the other person's shoes to see how it's. Yeah. Going. Yeah. What I liked about this one is that not only does Urkel, like she gets her wish that Urkel gets to see where she's coming from, but unexpectedly to her, it gets turned around on her. So she gets a, a new appreciation for where Urkel's coming from. Right. Uh, I really like, I mean, I love the show in the first place. Uh, I'm going to give this a very, another very solid a, I think this is a great Christmas episode. You'll feel good at the end, uh, but it's not like it's breaking any new formulas here. Uh, I gave it an A plus because of the message. Yeah, the message is fantastic. Yeah, I like the message. All right, so what's the next show that I didn't watch? Uh, Seinfeld. <laughs> oh God! Now I'm glad I didn't watch it. <laughs> is this the one that everybody always talks about? Well, that's like any episode of Seinfeld. Yeah, I'm not going to read like the whole. There's like a whole like. No, I get yeah. Three page synopsis, but the strike uh season, the last season, season nine, episode ten. Uh this one all right. This one's kind of all over the place. Not how I quite remember it. I'm just gonna start off there. They're at a Hanukkah party. Elaine gives her number to an actor playing or at a Hanukkah party at Tim Watley's, aka Brian Cranston. There are some stars in this. And then she gives a number to a guy uh, played by Kevin McDonald of Kids in the Hall fame. And she writes her number on it, and it has 23 it, it, on, like, a sub card. And she has 23 subs that she's already bought. She gets 24. She gets oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 
but she gave him that card. So she spends the whole time trying to get that card back. Uh, meanwhile, minimum wage, medium, minimum wage gets raised. Kramer goes back to work to end the strike at H and H bagels. That's why it's called the strike. But the main, the two, and then the other one too is Jerry meets a girl. This is also the famous two face episode where in one light, she is just absolutely stunning. And in another light, she's got two faces. Yeah. <laughs> the yeah. funny, the best thing about this you would have got was when George was like, she's two faced. And he's like, like the Batman villain. <laughs> <laughs> the George is like, yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> like, just keep now, up. isn't there a famous, oh. like a more famous, uh, Seinfeld episode where they don't even call it Christmas. It's called something else that they're celebrating. This is it right here. Oh, this is oh, okay. This is it. Okay. This yeah. is it. This is uh Festivus. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. So George gets a Festivus card. Uh, Jerry explains to Kramer what Festivus is and Kramer wants in on it and he asks, you know, the always wonderful Jerry Stiller on how he came up with the idea and he said that he was out shopping for a doll for George when he was a boy and somebody else grabbed it and he was as it's this is his, the exact words as he was raining blows down upon the other parent <laughs> he realized that there had to be a better way so he created Fest of Us, and every December 23rd you gather around a uh, aluminum pole you would like this one. You air your grievances. Plug for Johnny's other podcast. Uh, go check that out. And you um, you also do feats of strength. So I remember this very fondly. That's pretty much this whole episode. So I remember this very fondly. And oh, that was the other thing about this too, is George starts the human fund. So instead of buying people gifts, he just puts in there a hundred dollars. A donation has been put in your name to the human fund, which doesn't exist. And his boss accidentally or gives him twenty thousand dollars for the human fund. But then he finds out the human fund doesn't exist either. So it's kind of a very interesting thing. It's called fraud. (laughs) Yeah. But yeah. But the big thing is Festivus. I thought Festivus was a bigger part of this episode. It wasn't. Well, it's because it's because it's a big thing in pop culture. It's festive. I mean, again, I don't care about this show. Uh, I don't. I've never even seen this episode, uh, and I know what Festivus is. So I guess Festivus was actually created by one of like the creators of the show. Yeah, that's so. Somebody actually did make up this whole Festivus thing, and I think Seinfeld just kind of reworked it. Yeah. But as a Christmas episode, um, didn't score very high because it wasn't very Christmassy. It's more of just a fun episode. I gave it a B. I mean, the Two Face thing, the Fest of Us for the Rest of Us. I love yelling that every once in a while when I want to cancel Christmas. Yeah, my kids are getting annoying, so I just go, "It's Fest of Us for the Rest of Us." Yeah, bah humbug. Uh. I, I don't want to rate it because, A, I didn't see it, and I'm very biased against the show, and I don't think it's fair to the show because I didn't see the episode. I It's a fun episode. It is a great Seinfeld episode, but as Christmas, as I'm kind of like ranking these based on like a little bit of a Christmassy type thing. Yeah. But I mean, Seinfeld is famously, quote unquote, a show about nothing, right? Yeah. So that's why I kind of just was like, oh, this is a B. I enjoyed the episode because I do enjoy Seinfeld, but it's yeah. a B for me. All right. Uh, my next episode is Boy Meets World, Season 1, Episode 10, Santa's Little Helper. And in this one, uh, the main storyline, because the other the other one, I don't even, where the poor sis, little sister sits on Santa's lap and he dies is really <laughs> I kind of like that one. And she's yeah. terrified over it, as I would be as a kid if it happened to me. Yeah, I thought it was kind of cool. <laughs> uh, but uh, this is a real, this is one of the episodes that shows early on that Boy Meets World isn't afraid to be more than just a goofy sitcom. Because the gist of it is Sean's dad, and Sean is Corey's best friend, gets laid off from work, 
right around Christmas, mm-hmm. and Corey finds us out, and he vows basically to get Sean a Christmas present this year because he knows it's going to be hard on Sean's family. And Sean sort of doesn't take it right. Right, he takes it as a uh, he doesn't want pity, in yeah. a way, and he feels like he's getting pitied here by his best friend. Uh, it's a pretty heavy episode. I really like it. It does a great job, I and mean, then this is literally the first season that they did this episode. So, uh, this really sets the the tone for future Boy Meets World, where it can have some really goofy, fun comedy on top of some pretty uh, deep. Uh, issues here of you know we've all even you know we've all had people we know go through tough times Mm -hmm. for different reasons and stuff uh and it's even worse during the holidays you know not even that long ago my aunt who we're very close to house burnt down in november and they lost they lost almost everything right and so we all tried to do what we could to help them out that year uh, and that wasn't even that long ago. And there's been other times where stuff like that's happened to people that I know or stuff like that. And uh, this really shows, this is a great episode about not only Christmas, but friendship. So uh, I really love this episode a lot. What did you think about it? I thought it was good. Uh, I do like how Beanie has to, once again, explain, you know, why Sean wasn't like, hey, I'll just take this basketball. Yeah. But then the true gift comes when Corey wanted his, was going to take his $5 to go buy an imitation nylon uh, net for his basketball hoop, but gave it to Minkus for, you know, the, uh, what is it? The class gift to Mr. Feeney. Right. But he doesn't. Because Sean say, couldn't afford it. Yeah. yeah, but he doesn't say that. He's like, "Oh, you know what? I own Sean five dollars. I forgot to give him to him. I'm I'm the deadbeat, not Sean, because we, right, yeah, you know, like pounding Sean for that five dollars, and he's like, I'm the deadbeat. Here's the five dollars. I'm gonna give it to you because of Sean when he didn't have to. And I think that's where he really realized what the real gift was is not showing yeah. pity, but being there a, for yeah, being like a little workaround type deal. So no yeah. shows and covering for your friend. Yeah, and this show uh will constantly do this thing where both these best friends really are always there for each other, and it's pretty great. Uh I I've been given this for me uh, an A plus. This is a fantastic Christmas episode, a great message, and I really relate to this episode a lot. Uh, what did you what did you think? I gave it an A plus. Because Feeny Claus was pretty great too. <laughs> Feeny Claus is amazing. <laughs> I I enjoy a good Feeny Claus. Yeah. All right. What you got next? Uh, I have. What is this? Season six, episode twelve of Cheers, and it's just called Cheer or Christmas Cheers. Uh, so. I think I just looked up Cheers Christmas and this came up when I was like looking. Try- I think I was trying to look for a different episode, but it's still good. Uh, Rebecca schedules all the Cheers employees to work on Christmas Eve, delaying Sam's in- intimate plans because, you know, Sam likes to get his. Woody cancels <laughs> his Christmas plans in Indiana for a children's play in Boston. Carla doesn't mind working, but wants to celebrate the eve uh, before before late night. Okay. Oh, yeah. She makes a, another intimate comment. Uh, she is annoyed when Ale's friends arrive at 10.30 p.m. packing the bar while the regulars exchange presents. Sam searches for a last-minute gift for Rebecca and buys a pair of diamond earrings by mistake. It was supposed to be earmuffs worth $500 from a stranger named Tracy. As a reward, uh, Rebecca invites Sam to her apartment for supper. Sam gives up his date with Tracy to attend, only to realize everyone else was invited. Norm gets a job as a shopping mall Santa, 
and spends the evening drinking with the other norm santas. sorry i should have listened nope. yeah no problem <laughs> so he spends the night drinking with the other santas uh and Frazier is all disgruntled about everything about it being christmas uh when they briefly mistake one of Norm's co-workers as real Santa Claus, Frazier regains his, regains his Christmas spirit. Cliff tries to beat uh, Walt Twitchell at his post office food drive contest to win a trip to Walt Disney World, but is edged out. That is a funny thing to do with that as well. Um, so... That Disney World thing, I'm going to talk about it. They did a food drive. Whoever brought in the most canned foods wins the trip to Disney World. Woody forgot to put in two cans. And then all of a sudden he gives them to Cliff. And he's like, wait a minute. Now I can win. And then at the end of the episode, you hear about a crazed postman chasing down a flight. <laughs> on a run. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, I feel I, like cheers is the quintessential sitcom, right? Like if someone said, pick one sitcom that kind of defines what a sitcom is, uh, to me, Cheers would be one of those. It's also one of the first sitcoms I actually have a memory of as a person. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I so uh, Cheers kind of has a special place for me. I'll, I'll always be a big Ted Danson fan because of it. Uh, I love it when he pops up in anything else. Uh, Side note, I just finished watching that show Orville, which is like a Star Trek I love that type of show. It's incredible. And he just pops up out of nowhere in it. It's and he's yeah. awesome. Uh but uh yeah, this I, I love Cheers. And this is a I remember this episode too. And a lot of fun stuff in here. Uh I think this is another solid A for me. What about you? Yeah, it is. Uh I like how Frazier like flips from grumpy to all happy at the end just based on the notion because it's kind of cool how they do that santa thing they're it's norm and all the other santas and they're like and gathered around and the one santa's like well i gotta go and they're like hey do you know that guy was he in our class and they're like no no we're not sure and all of a sudden they're like wait a minute do you hear that and you can't really hear anything, but they're like, did you hear that? Then all of a sudden the guy comes back down and he's like, oh no, my wife's going to kill me. I locked myself out of the car or something like that. So that was kind of cool. Uh, the mix up with Sam and the diamond earrings pretty much knew that was going to happen, but that was pretty good. And there is a part where Woody is on the phone with his family in Indiana and he's at work. And all I'm thinking to myself is, being of a child of the 80s and 90s, is he not racking up a, a monstrous long-distance phone bill for whatever line they're on? Yes, right? Yeah. So that it was- is wild how that used to be an issue. And I even have a memory of when companies would make a big deal over the fact that you have free long-distance. You yes. remember that? Yeah. <laughs> and that was a huge deal when uh, we finally got a phone company that did that for us, so it didn't matter. Or you would get a prepaid calling card. Yes, yeah. Uh, famously, uh, take a drink because I'm about to mention wrestling. Uh, WCW would have commercials, and they would always do that. That would be one of the sponsors, one of those calling card uh, companies. <laughs> oh, man, yeah. Uh, I gave this episode an A. I thought it was pretty good. It's very good. And uh, I, would need to go, I need to go back and rewatch Cheers. I haven't watched it in a long time. Oh, just watch all of it it's just, yeah it's 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 one of those uh shows you can just kind of have it on the background because it's just a fun time type of thing yeah. all right uh i was trying to decide which south park episode i wanted to have for this because they for me have some very classic christmas episodes you I mean mr hanky the christmas poo uh comes up a couple times and those episodes are classic i even had that christmas album oh. at one point uh the south park one um and you said which one did you say was your favorite it was santa it was the one where he gets shot down yeah red slayed down yeah that was very good Uh, but i was like which one is the one that just sticks in my brain so much and it's probably because of how awful it is uh and that is woodland critter christmas (laughs) season eight episode 14 stan is walking out in the woods 
when it's very adorable creatures like the it's squirrels not, and it's deer. Not Stan. It's not Stan. It's the boy in the red poof ball hat. Oh, that's right. Yeah, but it's 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 Stan. And uh, there's narration. That's why Andrew is saying that. There's narration for it. So it's sort of like a story's been told, and that's the big reveal at the end of this too. But uh, he comes across these really adorable creatures, the squirrels and and, and birds and, and and deer, just the things you, the animals you would expect to see in the woods. There's a bear, and they're all like, "Hey, Stan, we, uh, hey boy, we need your help. Please help us." There's this mountain lion who's who's terrorizing us, and it's going to ruin a Christmas. Uh, and Stan's like, "Okay," so he goes to kill this mountain lion, and he kills the mountain lion. But the big reveal is. Thanks to him killing that mountain lion, now these woodland critter Christmas can summon forth the Antichrist. <laughs> yeah, it's... It's so messed up. <laughs> but it's very funny. But the reason that this is a great Christmas episode is who saves the day, Andrew? Isn't it Santa Claus? It is Santa Claus. Wait, yes. You've missed so much more of how... like I just put WTF for the notes because I did pretty much tell you that too. Yeah. Oh, there's a lot that happens, um, like uh, like the kittens. That like, Matt Lyon had kittens. Yeah. And he and discovers then, that, and they had to uh, learn how to do abortions. Yeah, because that's how you get rid of the Antichrist. I mean, it makes sense to me. Well, that's what they did to Kyle once the Antichrist enters yeah. his body. Because Kyle, of course. And then he Which dies. should be the giveaway of who tells us who's telling this story, because yeah. Kyle ends up being the bad guy. Yeah. I think this is one of the best of South Park episodes, because you literally think... Like, this is all happening. Yeah. Until it gets interrupted. And then you're like, oh, this is a Cartman story. I'm yeah, good. Cartman's giving a report in front of the class. <laughs> He's making up this story. It's so... When they sacrifice the bunny and they're like, blood orgy. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and you're like, what is going on here? It's like, beyond messed up. But Santa Claus saves the day. He shows up. And with Stan's help, they take out all these terrible, awful woodland, uh, woodland critter critters and stop the Antichrist from taking over the world. So, yeah, I. I <laughs> how do you how do you rate this? Andrew? I believe I gave it like an A plus. <laughs> I, I did. It's... I did because it's it's unique. Yes, very much so. It covers many different holidays and yep. the pure wackiness of it. And it's it's more of a holiday parody, which right. makes it kind of cool in a way, too. Like, it's going to take what we hold dear. And we, if you know Johnny and I, we love a good parody. Yeah. If it's done right. And this does it. It takes those. Rankin Bass, um, claymation, stop motion, you know, animation Christmases, and South Park does such a great job of incorporating that. And then you get like that feeling and you laugh back on like those moments as a kid. Like in Red Slay Down, when it shows the kids from like Afghanistan and they all look like the rank where I think it's rank and bass the yeah, because they have the big the eyes system. and everything, yeah. Yeah. And like this, I, yeah. I think that's why it's so great, is because they it it's a parody, but it's done so well. Yeah. That you can't you you know the line, but you're not quite sure where the line is. It's, it's <laughs> I, also I also give us an A, a also, also give us an A plus. Um this is once you see this episode, you will not forget it. Promise. <laughs> so that is for sure. All right, what you got next? Okay, I'm glad we're kind of ending on yours because mine. This one's getting heavy. This one is a very probably not so much to us to understand, but maybe because we enjoy history, we will understand a little bit more. But I don't think a lot of people in today's generation would quite understand unless you have somebody uh so my next one is all in the family uh the draft dodger this is season seven episode 14 this is on freebie but freebie doesn't play all of it 
So it could be 15. It's actually 15, but it's 14 if you're watching on freebie. All right, Johnny. Uh, this is a, yeah, this is a heavy one for sure. <laughs> this is going to be heavy. A uh, little synopsis here. Archie blows a fuse at Christmas dinner when Mike's friend reveals that he is a draft dodger in that he moved to Canada to avoid being drafted in Vietnam. Now, you're like, oh, Archie blows up, whatever. What adds to this is Archie invited a, a friend over, uh, Pinky Peterson, whose son just recently died in Vietnam. Yeah. That was drafted. So, I mean, there is some funny parts in this where he tries to play a prank on Pinky and he buys this like water squirting Santa Claus. But yeah, yeah. Archie's yeah. always getting squirted. But uh, so I'm just going to read some some quotes in here that just will kind of put some uh, con things into perspective is they get into kind of a fight at dinner when they all find out and David Brewster, this is David Brewster's quote. He is the draft dodger. Uh, he says, Lyndon couldn't come up with as many reasons for killing people as I could for not killing them is why he, you know, went over to Canada. Uh, Mike, another quote, Mike saying to Archie, when the hell are you going to admit the war was wrong? Archie comes back in a very angrily voice. I ain't talking about war. God damn it. I don't want to talk about the goddamn war no more. I'm talking about something else. And, and what he's done was wrong saying he won't go. What do you think the, the old people of this country can say whether not they want to go to war? You couldn't get a decent war off the ground. That was kind of a joke that way. All the young people would say no. Sure that sure they would, because they don't want to get killed. And that's why when we leave it, we leave it to Congress, because them old quacks ain't gonna get ain't gonna get killed and they're gonna do the right thing and get behind the president and vote yes. Uh, and so Arch asks for Pinky, he said, Pinky says, Arch is, is my opinion in importance? Archie says, certainly your, your opinion is important because Pinky's son was killed over there is important, uh, important gold star father. Your opinion is more important than anyone else in this room. And I want to hear that opinion. I want these young people to hear that opinion. Now tell them, Pinky, you tell them. And Pinky says, I understand how you feel, Arch. My kid hated the war too, but he did what he thought he had to do. And David did what he thought he had to do. But David's alive to share Christmas dinner with us. And Steve, and if Steve was here, he would want to sit down with him. And that's what I want to do. And then he says, Merry Christmas to David and offers his, you know, a handshake, and David says Merry Christmas back to him. And then after this, Archie gets very conflicted. Yeah. On how, you know, how is he supposed to feel now that he just said this person's opinion is most important, and he's like, it is what it is, in a way. You know, my son would want to be here with him, so... Let's just sit down and eat dinner. Yeah. It's a very, really, this episode really puts things in perspective. Very powerful episode. Yeah, very much so. Uh, this is, uh, by the way, an easy A plus. For yes. Me. <laughs> yes. For yeah. me too. Uh, yeah. Uh, this is the quintessential uh, example of when a sitcom, I mean, I was just talking about Boy Meets World doing mm-hmm. this, where it could be a really goofy sitcom and then all of a sudden it'll hit you in the face with some heaviness, right? Yeah. Uh, this is that quintessential thing. Because you're right, because most of the time we're like, uh, oh, Archie's mad. That's kind of the comedy there. Uh, him being over-the-top angry about stuff. But the message here is so deep and complex where, I mean, in 
in a way, it was he's like, well, of course, my friend's going to agree with me on this because of yeah. what he's going through. And then it gets kind of turned back on him in a way, but not in a way in which uh, he's like, um, you know, make it art. You feel stupid. It's, it's way more of, of his friend trying to think of his son that he lost. Uh, very powerful. Good God. I mean, I don't know how you can watch this and not be moved at all. Oh. If you, it, it, it's, it's beyond. Yeah. It's I, then wow. that- the end of the episode, Archie's outside, and then they do a close up of the door, and on the reef it says "peace." Yeah, that's it's, perfect ending. Yeah. It's, mm. And I've watched everything, every single All in the Family episode you can watch on Freebie. There, like I said, there's a couple that they leave out. I'm guessing because they get a little over the top. And when you watch, when you watch them all, you just look at. Archie Bunker as this because if you put yourself in the time period just you got to put yourself in the time period yeah Archie Bunker is just an old man set in his ways yes yeah. he knows his ways he knows what they are anything new is going to be weird I'm getting into that Archie Bunker status with you know when my kids start using slang and stuff like that yes yeah. it's like we're all we're all uh, we're all Abraham Simpson now right yes yeah. Yes. Yeah. I used to be with it and now what's it is weird and whatever weird <laughs> yeah. to me. So I can under I understand Archie a little bit, but this one you could actually see him rethink a lot of different things of what he needs to do. Yeah. Fantastic. Uh incredibly moving episode. I definitely have a very strong memory of that one. Uh I'm gonna follow it up with one that's not as heavy, but still pretty heavy. Uh, and that's really yeah. well considering what it is. I'm a big fan of Community. Fantastic. I love it. Very underrated show. But season two, episode 11, um, Abbott's Uncontrollable Christmas. Uh, the gist of it is uh, when Abbott wakes up in a stop motion animation, and this animation is done Perfect. incredibly well, by the way. It, it is amazing. Uh, they actually won an Emmy for it uh, because it's so it's so well done. Uh, He takes it as a sign that he and the group must rediscover the meaning of Christmas. Uh, But while all this is happening, it's the undercurrent of the group, the study group. They're all friends. They're all really close friends. uh, Realizing that something's going on with him. And they're doing it with Duncan, who's a great character, by the way. Very underrated character. Yeah. (laughs) And they kind of have to go along with this is try to figure out what's going on with their friend. Mm-hmm. And it's incredibly moving because as the episode's happening, each of the study group is a, is basically like a, a parody of a character from a Rankin bass. Like you were talking about before. Yeah. They're like a different toy. Yeah. Yeah. And as the episode's going on, they're losing a character per thing that's happening. Like something will happen. And one of the characters gets, uh, something happens to them and they're, and they're, gone but the gist of it is what's happening is they're they're trying to figure out what's going on with their friend and he doesn't want them to figure it out so he's sort of uh unconsciously i think yeah you know having their characters get voted off the island island so to speak yeah it gets pretty dang deep uh which this show tends to do on top of that having some really funny lines in it (laughs) Uh, I really love this episode quite a lot. What about you, Andrew? I did. I like the, it's another kind of like parody of, uh, like it's like we've alluded to rank and bath. So there's one part where Abed's doing like a snowman. Yeah. And it's supposed to be a sad Christmas song. And instead of actually having lyrics, he's just pretty much singing sad Christmas. Yeah. Song. yeah. yeah. I thought that was, I thought that was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> you know, just to do it that way. Yeah, like, uh, I I liked it, and then the you you're like, oh, this is just a fun wacky episode, and then you get to the deeper meaning of it, and you're like, oh, yeah. Uh, I highly recommend this show. By the way, if you have any way of watching Community, highly recommend yes. it. Every season, especially in its first three seasons, which are the strongest, they would always have an episode that would kind of come out of left field, like this the paintball episodes. There's all kinds of really fun and surprisingly deep episodes that'll come out of nowhere. Uh, They weren't afraid to take chances on this show. Yeah. Uh, Like the, 
One of my favorites is the is the pillow fort civil That's war type thing. Was, yeah, the kid. It's like a Ken Burns documentary, but it's <laughs> it's two best friends kind of going at odds at each other. Uh, but yeah, uh, this uh, this episode in particular is one of my all time faves of the show. Uh, this is an easy A plus 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 for me. I give as many pluses as I'm allowed. Yeah, I I give it an A plus as well. All right, so my last one is I'm so sorry to go with so much war theme going here, but this one I just purely picked because of the list that I found on the internet that we sent to each other. This was like on both of them, so I figured it'd be the best one to do. It is a season one, episode 12 of MASH, uh, just called Dear Dad. And pretty much it's Hawkeye writing a letter home to his father during Christmas. Uh, You know, he's just talking about different things relating a number of amusing and personal anecdotes, including Radar's effort to mail a Jeep home piece by piece, which is kind of funny. (laughs) Um, um, The monthly morality lecture, which was like sex and marriage, and the major didn't want to give it or didn't want to like say it. And radar's just like sitting there, like all intently. It's kind of funny. Uh, Trapper with his local medical, like charity, how he helps out all the kids in the village and everything else, and how he gave birth to a calf, like <laughs> stuff like that. Ongoing, the ongoing non secret relationship between Frank and Hot Lips Houlihan, one of the classic names in television history. <laughs> uh there is a part where where Frank and Klinger get into it about something and then they ended up fighting and Klinger is about to just pretty much unpin a grenade but the father kind of settles the situation and talks him down which I thought was really nice and then Hawkeye dresses up to play Santa Claus for the local children but then is required to go to the front line in the Santa costume for emergency treatment. So that, I mean, (laughs) that's pretty much the episode of him just writing stuff of what's going on in going on in Korea and everything else. And the wonderfulness of war, if you can understand me and with my sarcasm. Yeah. Uh, The one funny part that I thought was kind of cool was they did like the announcements and they're like, here's the list for the volunteers. Uh, for the Tutton Mile hike, and it just goes flat after that. Like nobody volunteered, and it kind of yeah. made, it kind of made me laugh. But I gave this one an A. I thought it was good. Yeah, it sounds like an A to me. Uh, Mash is one of those shows for me. That's a great example of, uh, you know, I got a lot of friends who are in the medical field, for example. And they'll tell you that their humor is very dark, right? Because they're always in the situations where they're surrounded by dark things happening. And that's kind of a way to deal with it, right? They sort of keep your sanity is to have find humor somehow, some way in the situation you're in. And that's sort of what MASH always was for me as, a, as an example of that. Uh, but yeah, oh man, what another classic show. Good gosh. All right. My last one, I'm incredibly curious what you thought about this. This is my first ever X-Files episode I've ever watched. Which is blowing me away. <laughs> if you had told me, Johnny, pick out one X-Files episode for me to watch, I, I, as the first I just, one ever, I wouldn't have picked this one. But this one has some great guest stars in it. I, so. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, I popped real hard. Yeah. This is, these so are this is, this is This is X-Files Season 6, Episode 6. How the ghosts stole Christmas. Uh, in the whole run of X Files, they only really had like a couple of actual Christmas episodes, but this one always stood out to me. On Christmas Eve, Mulder and Scully uh, stake out a house that is supposedly haunted, and it is. It's not supposedly. It is haunted by the ghosts of two lovers who had killed each other in a lovers pact eighty-one years before. Uh, and basically, as they as these two agents get inside, these ghosts sort of go out of their way to get uh, get Mulder and, and Scully to uh, to kind of have insights and be real about the relationship. 
is the gist of it. But uh, Andrew, tell us who plays the old ghost couple. Lou Grant himself, Ed Asner, and Lily Tomlin. Yeah, that's great, man. What a great duo! I was like, I was like, wait a minute, is that Ed Asner? Because I saw him billed as Edward Asner, and I was like, what is this? Like his son? <laughs> and then I saw the lady in the nightgown, and I'm like, is that? That looks a lot like Lily Tomlin. And it was. Yeah. Yeah. This is a great uh X Files is one of those shows that did a great job of not only being able to have like one off episodes like this was, but it also have, it would have it there's an overarching storyline too through the seasons. But this is like a one off. Like you can just watch this and you're not really missing any of the overarching story to X Files. Uh I adore this episode this is such a great fun detour from uh, x-files because x-files is usually a very and th- don't get me wrong there's some very deep themes to this but uh it's also done with a sense of whimsy in a way and yeah x-files is usually a pretty dark uh creepy scary sad at times uh suspenseful show and this is a little fun detour this is a lot more lighthearted than yes <laughs> the last two episodes I <laughs> yes <laughs> but no it is about pretty much two ghosts trying to get these two to kill them each other like they did yeah that's part of like the whole story yeah i'm a big x-files guy i love x-files it's one of my all-time favorite shows uh so I'm very curious what you thought about this being your first ever experience watching an X-Files thing. What did you think? Uh, I drew a line with like uh, the Twilight Zone. Oh, the way that yeah. these ghosts play like a little bit of a, like a trick out yeah. of where they were. They see their corpses before they even supposedly die. Like of the who shot who not getting into, well, getting into spoilers. Uh, what was the other thing? The analyzing of the relationship and then the rooms. They would go into one room, go through a door, and then they'd be right back in that same room. Yeah. And everything else. So I thought it was kind of very X File ish or not a uh Twilight Zone ish, but I it is it was good. It made me yeah. want it if I'm not doing anything, maybe watch, just flip on some X Files and yeah. see where it takes me. It's um the show itself is Definitely influenced by uh, that show and probably Twin Peaks. There's a little bit of Twin Peaks issue in it. Uh, but it's definitely becomes its own thing. I mean, it's because of X-Files and Simpsons that Fox, the network, was able to become a network, really. Yeah. Because of the strength of those two shows being a big deal. Uh, I really, I lo- this is an A-plus for me, but I'm also recognizing my biasness with X-Files. Mulder and Scully are some of my two favorite television characters ever. Uh, what about you? I gave it an A. I'm a big, also always had a big, crush on scully i think she's a stunning woman <laughs> i didn't the th- the other thing i got out of it was i didn't realize i don't know if it's like this every episode but the distinct personalities were scully's the woman right yeah yes yeah uh she's very seemed very by the book where Mulder was like let's just see what happens Mulder uh, uh Mulder. The reason that they're both in the FBI, the reason that he's a big deal is because uh, he's like an expert profiler when it comes to serial killers and stuff like that. Okay. He's helped in the storyline of the show. He's helped capture some big uh, serial killers and stuff, but he also loved like he's into the world of UFOs and, and all those kind of mysteries and stuff like that. And they pair him with her because she is uh, first and foremost a scientist. Oh. And so she always thinks that way. Like she always, oh, okay. she's always, that's how they balance each other out is he's always willing to accept that this is definitely like UFO example. That's definitely UFO. And but, she, she's always the first to say, well, it actually could be this or that. Okay, that's why okay. they work so well together is they really balance each other out that way. Cause she does With, mention in the beginning, in the episode, when they start hearing creaks and stuff like that, that it could just be everything in his mind. Like when yeah. it's a horror film or anything like that. Yeah. And the reason that it works is because, you can tell they actually have deep respect for each other, right? So they actually listen to each other's opinions on things. Yeah. So uh, that's why I love X Files, one of my all-time favorite shows. Uh, you have to tell me if you actually start watching it. Just let me know what you think. 
I think it uh, might be one yeah, one of those things where I just go uh if I'm sitting here editing something, maybe put it in the background. Uh, by the way, uh, you'll you'll see certain people who become big stars later show up uh, at a certain. I'll just give this one away. Uh, a cer- one episode early on has a certain uh, Jack Black in it, and one of the first things he ever did. Yeah, pretty good. Yeah, uh, but that's it. We did I'm it. I'm not mad, so I actually will enjoy that. <laughs> oh man. Uh, so we did it. That's it. Yep. Uh, next week on the Nostalgia Holiday House, what are we talking about? And I'll ask you again personally later because I'll forget. Even though you've already, you were the one that picked this. <laughs> it's, uh, I legit don't remember for the record. <laughs> it's Rudolph the the Rankin Bass, Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer, and I do believe Matt was saying that you kind of find it on YouTube. It is on YouTube. I saw with it there. commercials from that. Oh, okay. Yeah, I know that sounds crazy. Like, why would you want to watch commercials? But these uh, commercials—it brings it brings back it brings back memories. Yeah, I've already watched it this year, but I'm going to watch it again with those commercials. I haven't watched it at all. (laughs) It's it's a yearly watch for me. Uh, So we're talking some Rudolph. I get into my hate for that particular Santa Claus, I'm sure. Uh, And uh, we're going to discuss why you should just let Rudolph play some freaking reindeer games. Who cares? Yeah, here. Yeah, here. No, uh, I know it's full. I don't don't see it says with commercials, but Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer, full movie, nineteen sixty four. That's right. That's right. Uh, thank you for listening. We appreciate each and every one of you out there. Uh, Andrew, where can they find find us on the interwebs? Uh, the BICBP Radio Network, Apple Podcasts. Uh, what is that? Spotify or wherever you get your podcast. Uh, also remember. Every Friday, even though there's only like two, one or two more, depending on when this comes out, uh, we are doing the Nostalgia Funhouse Hall of Fame. Uh, there's still two more sections to, or two or three, I think three more to there's go. Three. Yeah. Yeah. Three more to go. Three more categories to go. Uh, you, that posting will be up uh, every Friday, probably depending on where you live. Um, yeah, we've already I done the central time zone. So we've already done toys yeah. and we did uh, music albums. Yes. Uh, basically, we it's me, Andrew, and a couple of our other podcast. Well, they're our friends. I'm just going to say that, but also podcasters. I think we, who, should, we should sound more professional podcasting colleagues. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. Podcasting colleagues. You guys, I'm the guy who didn't even prep for this episode. So I don't know why you said professional and my name in the same sentence. Uh, but. <laughs> Uh, we asked that we had five different categories and we each had one that we came up with. Mm-hmm. And those are the reason you have five choices there. So uh, go to our Facebook page and uh, Andrew does an awesome job there. And that's also how you'll be able to see the choices to vote from. And we'll have a special episode after all the votes are in where we reveal the winners and who's in the first official annual nostalgia fun house hall of fame. Yes. And also, next week will be our last episode of the year, as well. Yes, yes, because uh, yeah. we need we need some holiday time too. You yeah. know, yeah, we we're gonna yeah. take a lovely week off, and I'm trying to think what else. But yep, uh, check us out: Facebook, Instagram, uh, YouTube, and if you want to support us for only a dollar a month, uh, go check us out on Patreon as well. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good night. And have a great Festivus. Festivus.